Um, so, first I want to just explain a little bit of the idea behind this, because um, not everybody would be aware of the, of the idea. Um, when I decided I was going to, to have the idea, because a lot of people said that for this conference they wanted some things a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more advanced, um, and so I thought, all right, well, let's do a, a bit of a, a masterclass. And um, on the, the uh, Australian New Zealand Audio Crowd Facebook group, I put forward the idea of getting people to upload some pictures and we'd use those as a bit of a talking point for some of the aspects of this. And I'll go into how, we're, how I'm going to format that in a second. Um, what today is about is looking at various different techniques for doing a whole bunch of things to do with audio for interactive stuff, so games, etc. The most important part about this is that you guys get something out of it. So this is why I'm going to be sort of saying, hey, what should we do with this thing? And which direction do we want to go in? But more importantly, if at any point in time, if anybody has a question, don't hang on to it. Like literally, just scream out, hey, hey, me, hey, I've got a question. Um, but also if it's kind of thing of like, you know, can you tell me more about what you're doing there and why you're doing it? All right, there's no point in me sitting here and going, here's a cool thing, here's another cool thing, if you don't actually understand the context of why I'm doing things. So that's sort of what we're going to do. Uh, I want to start by actually thanking all the other speakers today. So Sally and Kevin and Jared, because they've actually done a really, really good job of prepping everything. We've kind of sort of built up through all these interesting layers to where we are here. The other thing which I'm really, really happy about is that I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first year that we've actually had a full audio stream or audio track. And uh, in the past, people have gone, oh, well, yeah, you know, audio track. No, nobody's really interested. This room's been pretty much full all day. So there is obviously enough interest to warrant having, you know, I mean, you know, this is the, the fourth session today and they've all been about audio and we've got people here who are interested. So that is also very, very good. Uh, so sh the scheduling app thing that's on the website is down today, I think, but um, they are, the organizers are collecting feedback about the session. So if you want to see more audio stuff, you should probably put the smiley face on all of our sessions today. Or, or, or at least just feedback saying, hey, it was great having some audio yeah. sessions. Whether you like the particular audio sessions or not, at least say to them, we liked that there were audio sessions, can we have more of that? That's the way that this sort of stuff builds up. Okay. Um, one other thing before I start, this lectern has a drinks holder. That is so cool. <laughs> I don't need it, but it's got a slot out drinks holder. Wow. All right. Um, okay, so a few of you may not know, you've sort of, there's, a, there's a name up on the thing. It's kind of like, who the heck am I? Why would you come along and care about what I have to say about anything to do with anything, let alone audio? Uh, my name is Stefan Schutz. I have been working in game audio for close to 20 years. I was a professional musician for 10 years before that. Yeah, I'm old. Um, I was the entire audio department at a studio in Australia for about eight years. It was uh, the THQ Blue Time Studio. Um, more recently, I spent 18 months working for Magic Leap in Florida doing R&D in spatial audio. I've been working for the last year for the Facebook spatial audio uh, team. Um, I've been working for Zero Latency VR. Locally, I've been working on the um, uh, VR Regatta. I did all the sound for the VR Regatta game recently. I have just finished writing a book on audio for the new reality, so VR, AR, MR 360. That comes out January, February next year. Um, I did all of the sound and music for Yonder the Cloud Catch Chronicles. I did all the sound for Armello, blah, blah, blah. I've done some games. Um, so I am, however, uh, really, I'm kind of jack of all trades. So... 15, 16 years ago, I wrote full orchestral score for Jurassic Park, and that was recorded with Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, and that was the first fully orchestral game produced in Australia. At the moment, I'm doing spatial audio. Uh, I've also, uh, as part of my company, Sound Library, I've created commercial sound effects libraries for specifically for interactive stuff, but for film and television stuff, and those libraries are used by Skywalker Sound, EA, Activision, Disney, Warner Brothers. Why I put this little bit in is because for a lot of you who are thinking about a career, oh, I've also taught at RMIT and BCA and stuff like that. This is actually all relevant because how you make a career in audio is by doing all of these different things. I think one of the reasons why I've managed to actually survive is because it's kind of like, oh, all right, well, there's no composing work at the moment. I'll go off and do that. 
I spent uh, three years living in Japan, uh, two of those years I was sort of doing my own stuff and, and for one year I was in Tokyo working for an anime studio uh, setting up uh, their, their audio department. And, and again, if, if somebody comes up to you and it's even vaguely audio related and say, hi, can you kind of do this? The answer is yes. If you don't know how to do it, you work out how to do it, but the answer is always yes. All right, so I've been submitted a whole bunch of images um, this morning on the, on the Facebook group. We're going to go through all of them, and then I'm going to get you guys to choose which one we want to use. However, I am going to make a comment on this one first, because this was the first one that was put up, so I'm going to congratulate the person who reacted that quickly. Uh, I think it was Dimitri. Yes, it was Dimitri. Um, and also because I immediately noticed that that was John Constantine, and I really, really like John Constantine. Now, and this is also important, because the way we're going to do this is look at an image and sort of go, well, what would we do, how would we approach this, and then I'll actually get into doing some, some actual sound design, and I'll even show how to implement things in wires, etc. Alright, but we can steer this where you want to go. But the reason I'm going to talk about this one is because I know his background, I know a lot about him, so I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff that a lot of you guys don't know, but even if we just look at that... There's a lot that's said in that image. So that's a concept image for a game you're working on. So there's a lot about his character. We probably assume it's going to be one of the leading characters because you know there's a lot of detail put into it. There's a lot in that image about how he's dressed. His you know his shirt is untucked. The jacket looks sort of old and tatty. He's smoking. He's sort of slouching. But what's kind of more significant is the hand that's coming off to the edge, which is definitely a sort of a pallid-looking colour and has most clearly got claws. Ah, uh, right. See, the other day they gave me a, a, a walkabout thing. I obviously cut the cost for today. Um, so, so essentially what we've got here, here is uh, John Constantine is actually a, a modern, everyday, basically wizard, magic user or whatever, and um, most of the demons of hell want his soul and he is an unpleasant person to be around. He doesn't... He's not actively trying to hurt people, but pretty much anybody who comes into contact with him tends to die, usually because the demons are trying to get him. Uh, but so, so from the point of view, of if we were going to deal with this from a sound point of view and what we were going to think about, it's like, well, are we thinking about it just as a, a dude in a jacket who smokes? Or would we, would we be approaching it from the point of view of the ramifications of who and what he is? So the fact that almost everywhere he goes, there's something magical about him, there's something demonic following him, giant claws, etc. Uh, would we be thinking about it from like, you know, one of those old classical, you know, non-smoking adverts of, you know, we're going to do the sound of the breath every time he inhales and what the sound of the smoke going into his lungs is because uh, one of the other things you find about John Constantine is his entire body is riddled, riddled with cancer um, and he's going to die. Um, and, and there's a very, very interesting way that he gets rid of the cancer, which I won't spoil for anybody who doesn't know the story. Um, but the, the point here is, is that what might seem on the surface to be just a picture of a dude smoking can have so much more going on. So whilst me showing you some cool techniques and some cool implementation and all that sort of stuff might be valid to how we do our job, Contextually, how we approach things and how we think about things, how we analyse things, how we get ourselves in the right mindset is really, really important as well. Because it's, there, there's so many different... Uh, essentially, our role, if we are dealing with audio, our role is to support the narrative. And even some of the games we looked at just before in the previous one, you know, little, little handheld games with the thing that's spinning around, there's still fundamentally a narrative to that. Storytelling is what human species has been doing since the first cave person basically scrawled something on the side of a cliff that was like, check me out, I, I ran away from a mammoth today, uh, aren't I cool, I survived. So, you know, they, they, they put up a, a picture of, of, you know, said mammoth by scrawling into the wall. And, and literally, this is why language exists. Language exists so we can tell stories. Practically everything we do and, the, you know, our memories, everything about us is about telling stories. And this is why audio is so important, because audio supports the telling of stories. Whether it's music and, you know, a love theme or a, or a sad theme or a victory theme or, you know, some sort of sound there where, you know, every time John Constantine walks outside of a door, we get this kind of like, you know, whispering sort of sounds of like somewhere there's something ethereal looking at him and, and very much wanting to predate on him. 
So, we're, we're, so, so I wanted to make that, cons that, that comment about the John Constantine one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through the images. Uh, so that's not one of them. So we have... <laughs> well, no, no, that was actually the, the thread. So we have um, some me goring noodles. We have... Uh, this was a, an image from Leone's character design talk yesterday. So bunches of different characters and stuff. <laughs> There's John Constantine. We have uh, Giselle. Oh, that's actually Giselle's second from the front with the uh, on the cello. That's Giselle's daughter playing cello. Um, Trevor Dyke sent this one. I love this image. Uh, that, that is so evocative. It's a bit small, but it's very, very cool. Um, uh, Jody sent this one, which again I really, really like. There's a lot that we can do with that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, Justin, are you here? Oh, so great. So he threw a hand grenade in and then left the room. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Um, Caitlin sent through some trees on a hill. And then we have uh, Michael sent, uh, you know, something that is a universe, a galaxy or whatever. So I want to start off by basically saying, which one do we want to work with? Is there one that anybody here is so strongly about? It's like, let's do that one. Or do we want to put it to a vote? I mean, we don't want to spend too much time on this, but... The one that's before. That. Yeah, I, I like that as well. I like that as well. So, so the whole idea here is, is that this is what we've been presented as a concept sketch. Now, uh, and this is one of the other things that I would like to... Uh, actually, just a quick show of hands. Is there anybody here who's not actually an audio practitioner? Okay, so we've got some people who are designers, coders, producers, artists, things like that. Cool. I really want to encourage everybody that's here to get involved with each other as soon as possible. doesn't matter whether you don't write a note of music or create a sound for six months into the project. You should be talking with the developers day one. So if literally the project is like, we're going to make this game. I'm like, cool, what can you tell me about the game? This is all we've got. All right? Awesome. And there's a whole bunch of things that we can assume from this. Um, is it Earth? Well, having another planet in visible orbit with a ring around it tends to suggest not, unless our solar system started with all the planets kind of bunched up and they sort of floated apart. Yeah. So let's just say it's, it's probably not Earth. Um, we've got some life there, and it's actually fairly advanced life because there are things flying. Great. So we've got things that are going to be making noise and they're going to be moving. And that in itself is really, really important because it's not just... Well, we've got a static volcano over there that rumbles occasionally and we've got water that kind of laps occasionally and we've got some air around us. We've actually got things that are going to be moving and there's plant life, etc. So we have to consider all the sort of possible things we might want to do. So somebody might say, hey, what we want you to do is go away, build us an environment. Because we're going to, we want to work together in the same way we've got a bunch of guys doing concept sketches. Uh, sorry, I, I will, if I use guys here, please take it as being non-gender specific. It is a reaction of mine. I'm trying to use folk rather than guys, but I'm just saying if I use guys, I mean non-gender specific, specific. I apologise if anybody interprets it the other way. We have a bunch of folk here who are working on art, uh, concept sketches and all that sort of stuff. And they've actually said, they're really open-minded, and they said, we want you to kind of do some audio concept sketches and they may influence the design. God, I would love to work on a project like that. Um, and I have worked on projects where people have been Real, brought the audio in really early. So I've got an opportunity here to influence the design of where this is going. That's awesome. So what are we going to do? Are we, uh, do we want to make something stylistic? Or do we want to make something realistic? And when I say realistic, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a completely fantastical creature. Do we want it to sound as though it's a realistic style of, of monster or do we want something that is really stylistic? When I say stylistic, maybe all the sounds in this world are somewhat musical. So that all the creatures have some sort of tonal, harmonic sort of sound, etc, etc. All right. So now that I've dished that out, where are we going to start? Uh, let's, let's start by creating something, and I'll go through the process of how I might create something, but I want somebody here to basically say, I'd like you to start on blah, and I'd like it to be stylistic, or I'd like it to be realistic, or I'd like, you know, so, so is there anything that here within this image, or it doesn't even necessarily have to be something in this picture. It needs to be something that perhaps is, 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 would be evoked by this picture. There's a hand that's gone up up the back. Oh, 
<laughs> thank, you every, thank you, everybody, for coming. And All right. All right. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get a couple of other suggestions, but I will we'll, we'll atta tackle that. John, what did you want to say? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, um, maybe dissonance, like order versus chaos, because you've got the red and the blues there. They're di very different. Yeah. Apparently, that just means it's a, it's a film trailer poster. I learnt this from the latest Blade Runner. <laughs> All trailer posters are basically blue and orange. <laughs> All right, but okay, so that, that doesn't discount yours, and in fact, we can bring that into yours. The, the volcano, consonant, and dissonant, that's a good one to add. Sal, do I always start with ambiences, but that still doesn't discount the volcano, and I'm still sticking with that, but we're bringing this all together. Yes? Going off that, I was going to say, like, scope or depth or scale, like, because there's a lot of, there's foreground and background, maybe it might be nice to actually create sort of depth first. Good point, uh, and, I, and I'm going to expand on that. I just want to hear that last comment, and then I'm going to move on. I'd kind of like to see a stylistic um, ambience versus uh, a realistic um, uh, sound effects. Okay, cool. So, what I'm going to do, uh, uh, we'll pause there for a second. Now, so here's the thing. Um, I'm going to use an example of, uh, and I talked about this the other day, so in uh, Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles, which I did recently on PlayStation 4, there's a whole bunch of things I got the opportunity to play around with there, and I actually think, let's see if we can do that with this volcano, because this is playing on your idea and your idea, and in fact all of these ideas. One of the things when I started working on Yonder was, it's on an island. All right, great, well I need to sound for the, for the, for the ocean. Oceans have a level of detail. I'm not talking visually, I'm talking from a sonic point of view, and a lot of games have level of detail visually. There's no reason why games shouldn't have a level of detail sonically. So what I did with the oceans in Yonder is there's actually three in a bit layers, we'll say three layers, but you only ever get two of the layers playing at any one time. So when you get within certain distance of the ocean, when you get within audible distance of the ocean, you start to hear that low distant rumble. Now, everything I'm about to say, apply to the volcano. From a distance, you get that low, distant rumble of the waves. As you get to a certain point, in a lot of cases in the game, it works quite nicely. It's kind of where you, you breach a hill and you can see the ocean. At that point in time, you're close enough and what gets, starts to happen is the actual sound of the waves, that higher frequency sound of the waves starts to actually come in. As you walk across the beach to get to the actual waterfront, the rumble goes away because by this stage, you're not really getting the rumble anymore. It's more really the sounds of the waves. And the sound of the waves kind of gets, a, it sort of peaks a little bit and then it starts to actually go down because as you get right up to the shoreline, what you're getting is the sploosh, sploosh around your feet. The waves are still audible, but I tone them down because the assumption I'm making is what you're hearing now is the waves that are kind of that way and that way 100 metres, but what's at your feet is this sort of thing. So there are multiple layers there. So with our volcano, we can do this ambience, we can do this sort of thing of level of detail of we can have the volcano at a, at a great distance away and it is maybe just a rumble. So, um, all right. Now... Some of you might notice that this piece of software looks a bit old and clunky. This piece of software is, well, I'm actually going to call it by its real name, which is Cool Edit Pro. Uh, this, this is basically after Adobe bought it out. And this is Adobe Audition 1.5. This is close to 20 years old. And there's a reason why I still use it. Because after Adobe bought it, they screwed it up. Uh, they did a really clever thing like, oh, we're going to change the entire interface. So all of these icons that you know backwards and can use in your sleep, we're going to change all of those visually just because reasons. Um, now, interestingly, now I do use quite a few, like I use some bleeding edge product, products. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm using uh, New Endo 7 slash New Endo 8. I use Contact and a whole bunch of uh, Spitfire libraries for music, um, uh, using Wise, F models, all this sort of stuff. But for sound editing, I don't use Pro Tools. I don't like Pro Tools. I use a 20-year-old piece of program because it does what I need it to do and it's stable. Having said that, it'll probably crash on me now. <laughs> All right, so um, let's do this. Let's go noise. Let's go, yeah, that'll do. Uh, probably only need five seconds worth. There you go. I like noise. <laughs> Bit loud. Oh. Um, Go into here, pitch ratio, do that. Uh, it's still way too high. You have to crank it down a few times. 
There are other ways of doing this. This is just a quick way to do it. So I've just grabbed some noise. Oh, hang on. Uh, sorry. This is a new install, which means what it did is... Redo, thank you. Yeah, sorry, resample. There's always one little tick box you got to tick in it. That's better. So I've just generated some noise, and now I'm literally just cranking it down a long way. This is a Microsoft Surface, so it's not bleedingly fast as far as a computer is concerned, but it gets the job done. So that's going to be the basis right there within less than a minute of what our, our um, volcano might be like <coughs> from a distance. And that's, that's really bog simple. I would, frankly, I'd probably um, grab something like a... In fact, let's just do that. Let's just do it. Hang on for a second. Um, uh, what on earth is that? Oh, that's what I want. Go away. Um, I want to open you up. And now I want to open... Where are you? Hang on a second. Are you plugged in? All right. Bear with me while I make sure this is plugged in. Um, what I've got here on a little drive is something that I carry with me, frankly, everywhere, pretty much. Like if I'm travelling or whatever, from the work point of view. Hmm. That might be problematic. It's something that I have been carrying with me everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit disappointing that that actually seems to not be... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm about to do. Excuse me for a second. Uh, the reason why I'm concerned about that is because that is actually a hard drive that has over 150,000 sound files on it, um, and which I use rather regularly. <laughs> There's a light on. There we go. All right. Uh, no, okay. Uh, for the record, I, I mean, I, I basically, these are the distributors of the sound effects libraries that I make, so they, they gave this to me. Uh, the replacement, like if you had to buy that, there's about $10,000 for the sounds on that. Yeah. Um, oh, now my mouse is not working because it doesn't like that. Okay, that USB port is... I, I, I'm getting a sneaking suspicion that the dock on this is um, being slightly problematic, which is a little bit annoying. I mean, I can still do... Yeah, it's not registering the dock. It's really interesting. All right. Don't worry about it. We'll keep going. I have to use a trackpad. I hate trackpads. All right. So, what I'm doing here is I'm looking, I'm going to look for, here we go. I'm going to look for a sound. In fact, I've actually got one, but I'll open this up anyway. Um... In fact, I'm going to use this sound. Yeah, that's perfect. So I, I had a sound in here before that I was just testing my, my gear with, um, which is literally this one. So this is a... That's that. This is just a that I ago for those reasons. Um, but we can do the same sort of thing that we did with the white noise. Because what we're after here is essentially just a rumble sound. So, put it in here. And the reason why that rumble sound is, is good is because most of what I do from a sound point of view is I play around with compound sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these up really, really quickly and then I'm going to put them into Ys and I'm going to show you what I, what I would do. But let me just do a couple of other things first um, because what, I'm going to be faster when I work with the mouse. So what I just want to do is I want to come in here. Yeah, open up. Open up. See, this is why I hate... Mm. That's why I hate trackpads, because they're terrible. Um, 
I want, let's use this. I'm going to look for a drone. Night, drone Nightmare Sewer. I like the sound of that. Now, I, there's a reason why I'm doing this. I am literally just grabbing a thing and I'm just going to throw it in and I'm just going to work with it. Um, because what I'm trying to show you is, uh, in fact, uh, many of the other speakers today have talked about limitations. I do spend quite a lot of time going through sound libraries and choosing what I feel is the right thing. But you know what? Quite often, you can get some really, really good results just working with what you have available. And I actually did this um, quite a few years ago. I was asked to give a guest lecture out at AFTRAS. Yeah, that'll work. Um, and I basically said, um, all right, well, um, okay, let's, let's, do some, let's do some sound design. I'll make some sounds in here um, without, with, with only the sounds that I have available for me in this room right now. I had a portable recording device and literally I was in a standard quiet lecture theatre and everybody's like, there's no sounds in here. I went, yes, there are. And they sort of said, all right, okay, fine, make a giant robot. I went, great, not a problem. Got my sound recorder, climbed up on the desk to the clock that was on the wall and held it right up close against the clock got some click, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, put it in here, cranked it down about four octaves and it was just clunk, 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 clunk. And they're all kind of like, oh, okay. Um, and, and the point about this is, is that don't, don't, don't sit there going, oh, I need the latest sample library and I need the this and I need the that. It's like, no, go and record your cat. And in fact, I'm gonna show you a cat in a little bit. Cats are, cats are awesome. Okay, so we can use that as well. Um, one other thing I'm going to get is a cat. And then I'm going to unplug this drive. And so with a handful of sounds, we're going to do our... Oh, no, actually, there is one other. I'll do the cat first. Uh, tong. Uh, tonka. That should be enough to give me the, the, the sound I want. Uh, yeah. Hey, tonki knees? Oh, is it? Yeah, actually, you might be right. Tonki. There you go, you're right. Sal wins the gold star for the day. Yes. I'm thinking of hiring Sal as, as my um, bouncer. She just makes sure I don't make silly mistakes and stuff. <laughs> um, and let's grab one more. Fire extinguisher, no, 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 campfire, you'll do. So I'm trying to get through this quickly because I want to actually get into, you know, okay, so that's cool. So those sounds, I'm going to do everything from now on with just those sounds. Sorry, I just work a lot faster with the mouse. All right, so I'm not even going to bother trimming those. Normally I would trim them, et cetera, et cetera, for optimization. But let's just get into wise and get some, whoops, wrong one, get some stuff happening. Oh, no, it is too. Oh, well, too late. I'll just have to see what I can do. Alrighty, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go this one, I'm going to go cat, that'll do. I actually should have my other... <laughs> okay, the, on this screen here, the typing is about that big and I've got not a good set of glasses with me, so basically between uh, my bad typing and everything else, if you're more worried about me typing badly, then so be it. Uh, drone... Noise and car. Now this, so this is actually going to double a little bit in giving you a bit of an insight into wise. Um, what I will say is that what I'm doing here, you could do in FMOD, you could do in Fabric, you could do um, almost certainly do directly into um, the Unreal. Um, audio stuff. Uh, all right, that'll do. All right, so bring up the full thing. So what we've got here is so. In what possible way could that be of any use to us for something that's going to be an ambience or something that's going to represent a tonal volcano? 
The point is, is how you actually implement these things. And in all of, uh, so just really quickly, show of hands of people who are basically from linear or from non-games. So the, who, who here is basically new to games? Okay, cool, cool, there's a handful of you. This is gonna be useful to you guys because basically most of what I produce, I produce that works in real time. All right, so the whole point is, is what we are going to do is, we are going to get the cat and I'm going to add it into a new parent, which is a different uh, box that allows me to do some funky things with it. So by putting it into this, I have more functionality there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up to be continuous like a loop. Well, why would you want a cat to loop? Well, we'll find out about that because what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a trigger rate. So what we're actually doing is uh, what I've just done is I've said I want the cat to loop, but it's not just looping end to end. I'm basically setting up the looping functionality to continually respawn the cat. And I'm going to do that by setting a spawn rate that is really crazily close together. So instead of one second, it's going to be every 0 0.1 second, for instance. And then what I can do with this is I can come in here and I can get the cat there and I can crank the pitch right down. Come on, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And then I can come into this level and I can crank the pitch right down again. And so let's hear what we get now. Maybe we've cranked the pitch a little bit too far. Maybe we should bring the volume down. Wow, that's a bit responsive. Okay, that seems to be giving me all or nothing. Like literally, I click that and it's like... Yeah, I know. It's just weird. You shouldn't do that. I've, I've never had it do, do that before. Why is it so great? Why is it so what? Why is it so great? <laughs> grey or great? Okay so, 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 okay, so this is WISE. For those of you who do not know, this is actually a very, very powerful piece of audio software. It looks like a piece of accounting software. It is really unintuitive. I hate the way it looks, but it is incredibly powerful. So, all right, so basically we decided that that's maybe a little bit too low down, so... Yep. So what it's doing is it's spawning so many times. But what it is, is in a lot of ways, this is, there's a tonal element to that because being an animal's voice, it has a pitch in the same way ours does. So from the point of view of as we get closer to it, this could be one of the underlying layers that we're using within our volcano. So, all right, so let's play, let's continue to play the game. Let's basically get this and throw it into a parent, which is going to be a blend container. And in this blend container, so we've got that one there, and now we can throw in the car. We will copy that and we will paste it into there. And so now what will happen in here is it will actually play the car layer as well. But if we get the car layer and we drop the pitch of the car layer down and then we get our random container with our cat in it. We bring it down. What is it? I don't know why it's doing that. That's terrible. Negative 15. And where are we now with our blend container? Oh, that's right, the car's not looping. Let's tell the car to loop. There we go, that's that, that fixed. So again, we've got a layer in there. All right, so throw in another layer. I'm gonna put in that, and that's gonna be sine wave. And I come down to here, because in this particular piece of software, I can actually just generate a sine wave. But I can generate the sine wave at, say, 50 hertz, just check that. Again, tell it to loop. Let's make it 100 hertz. 50 is a little bit too low for these speakers. Nah, it's too high. Rule of halves. Okay, I don't mind that. <laughs> speakers don't like it, but... <laughs> Sine wave is in there, but you can barely hear it. The car is in there, but you can barely hear it. Now, all of these would be set up in such a way 
that, and I would, I'm not going to go through it because it would take a bit of messing around, but I can put a parameter in here that is linked to the distance of the volcano, and that's an automatic parameter that just goes, as I walk across the game world, as I get closer to the, to the um, volcano, that distance parameter changes in value, like it decreases. Um, and so I could literally have it so that at a long distance away, all you're getting is the, just the, the, that, that very first rumble I did. And as you became closer, it, it blends in, say, the car rumble, and as you get closer again, it blends in the cat. And the other one I was going to throw in was like a fire. And the one with the fire would be, again, pitch shifted down, and as you got closer, it would make, perhaps have another pitch shifted up layer that would fade in. It would have um, a low pass filter that would fade, that would be reduced, so that the sound opens up as you get close. So essentially what I've shown you here is, uh, and, and the thing about this is, is that all those layers I've just thrown in are combined in real time in the game. And this is actually quite important. Yeah, one second. Uh, because the whole point is about, about games is that, uh, and, and this is the sort of thing that um, with the people talking before about, you know, uh, even um, Jared sort of saying, oh, and I wrote a five minute piece of music. It's like, ah, uh, because it's kind of like just writing a single wave file, five piece of music to me is like, I haven't done anything like that for, for a long, long time. Um, because I would, even if I do have a piece of music that's five minutes long, I've probably broken all the instruments out individually. Uh, in Yonder, the music in Yonder has all these layers that are broken out. Um, so that if you jump off a cliff, your character pops out a little umbrella, Mary Poppins style, and floats to the ground. And when that happens, there's a harp, there's a descending harp line. Dum 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 dum. Hit the ground, the harp line goes away, and you just go on. So there's 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 dynamic elements within the music. So the music is changing all the time, backwards and forwards, which is pretty much exactly the sort of stuff you guys were doing. It was funny when I was watching your talk. I'm going like, yep, yep. Oh, I like that. You know, because it's the same sort of thing of when you start to dissect what you can do with the music and the sound design, there are a whole bunch of things that you can do dynamically. Um, I will probably try and see if I can squeeze in showing you how I do that with, with birds and stuff as well uh, in, a, in a minute. Wow, we're chewing through time really quickly. Okay. So we've done a, a very, very quick idea of how we assemble something, how we would approach and how we would assemble something like Volcano. Thank you. What was your I was going to ask, is that cat going to consume a whole lot of voices because it's constantly re-triggering? Oh, that one like it is at the moment? Yeah. Hell yes. You, you, you would, okay. Do not give any, okay, that little trick I did with the cat, do not do it like that and give it to somebody as is because they're, they're, if you did that on a mobile device, their phone will explode. Um, <laughs> what you can do, and that's a really good point, from an optimization point of view, I've, I've literally just thrown everything in there. There are, uh, in fact, I'll just show you really quickly. One of the things you can do, wrong one again. I wish they wouldn't have two symbols that look similar. Um, so here's a good one. Where's the car one? So there's the car one. Down here, it's showing me the raw sound file. So here we've got the whole sound file. And I can actually go, no, I just want a looping bit. And that's as much as I need. Now, within the tool here, this is within the, the, the authoring tool. When it comes to building the, the, the sound banks, which is getting all the sounds ready to put into the game, this program will automatically say, he only wants that much of it, and it discards everything else. So I can actually do some optimizing in this tool, which is really, really useful. With the thing with the cat, and I've got it spamming lots and lots of sounds, uh, the other thing I could do, and I'll in fact show you for that one, so with the cat one, I could come right down into here, and under the advanced settings here, I can say ignore parent, limit sound instances to, and here it's defaulting to 50, and I can basically say five which means I'm saying, do this triggering behaviour I want you to do, but what it'll do, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, kill, kill the last one, kill the last one, so that the oldest one will always get bumped off. So from that point of view, and this is actually something that is very, very important for what we do. Optimization is a critical part of our job, and it should be something that you consider, maybe not from day one, but it should be something that you're looking at all the time. I can get a little bit lazy sometimes and go, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll optimise it later on. And that's, I, I think that's a bit, you know, I've been doing this for long enough that I'm, I'm totally confident that I can do it. Um, and so it's something that you probably should be looking at over time, changing your things, how many voices are going. Um, if you've got like a, a, a herd of llamas going past, you can set it up so there's only X number of voices, but you can also set it up so that the further away they are, the more chances those ones have got of being culled, sort of from a, from a priority point of view. So that means that we can get the crowd effect without using 4,000 channels and thus exploding your project. 
Uh, very good point. Thank you for raising that. All right. I want to move on because I, I, I want to sort of get through some other techniques as well. And I'm hoping that we can sort of... So, so essentially, even though we haven't made the perfect uh, example of a, of a, of a, of a harmonic um, uh, volcano, you can see the approach to it from the point of view of I find something that is tonal, I would go through, I would search for something that really worked in the same way. And in fact, if we wanted to with that image we had, I could possibly put an underlining tone behind every sort of ambient thing. The wind has a certain tone and the volcano has a certain tone and even the, 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 the waves have a certain tone. And if I was really, really clever, I could tune all those so that they are basically the entire world ambience in this particular scene is in D flat major. When you go to the desert, everything cha changes to A sharp major or whatever. And so you could basically have your, your birds and your tree are all tuned because the piece of music that you have is supposed to be, uh, is supposed to lock in and make, everything's supposed to sound nice. And we know that dissonance is where things start to sound a little bit unsettled. So if you've got a bird sound you've just thrown in that happens to be like a, 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 a semitone above the, the main melody of your piece, it's just gonna be like, no, 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 something's wrong. And quite often it's hard for, hard for non-audio people to know what's wrong. They'll just be like, no, I'm not feeling comfortable here. I'm not feeling settled here. And you could go through and go, oh, that would be why. Because all those birds seem to be like, you know, playing sort of roughly in this scale and, and, and in this key. And, and all the, the sounds that I've put in the music is a completely different key. And it's one that just kind of clashes a little bit. So again, these are things that, it's our job to sort of pick up on those things. You also use that Yeah, totally. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, think about if um, uh, you could have things from a point of view of if... if and it is a perfect example. Um, you've got a car chase, and the, the other, as, the, as the bad guy's car gets closer to you, it's got an underlying... The, both cars have got an underlying tone, like a pitch, and the bad guy's one is a semitone different to yours. As it gets closer, that pitch comes closer, and it's just like, ah, get away from me. So there's, yeah, there's all sorts of tricks and techniques you could do like that for, for, for exactly that kind of thing of, of playing, playing off against each other. And tonal stuff, and this is really important, tonal stuff doesn't have to be overt. There was a, a, there was a, a thing I was working on years ago where it was, it was a, a little, um, it was a pitch video. And, and at one point there's, there's this, this bit that happened as a kind of a, a, a wishy, dangerous sound. And the guy who was the producer said, not quite comfortable with that. And I'm like, what's the problem? And he said, and this is also interesting to, to Jared's talk, he was saying, I don't have all the musical or sound terminology to explain what the problem is. And I said, that doesn't matter. Throw adjectives at me. Anything. And he said, oh, it's going it's to be dangerous. It's got to be threatening. It's got to be like, you know, sort of a, a clashing buzzy sound. I went, right, thank you. And I grabbed hold of buzzy. And I went into that drive to a recording that I did in a small country town in Japan of a sawmill with a giant buzzsaw. And I pulled out that giant buzzsaw and I put it into the mix of everything else was going on. And then I cranked it down and down and down. So this is where everything was audible. And I cranked it down and down and down and down and down. So you couldn't hear the buzzsaw anymore, but it was there as a presence. Now I've heard, I've never tested this out, but I've heard of Hollywood sound designers that when they're wanting to make monster sounds and stuff like that, they get the recording of a baby crying because it really distresses human beings and they'll either just mix it in really low, but the frequencies are there and our brains can pick them up or they'll pitch shift it down and it's still something that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of things about various different uh, 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 frequencies can be basically quite unsettling. Uh, it, I, I've, it, there is also a, um, apparently a large tiger actually has elements of its growl that are sub-frequencies that will paralyse their prey momentarily. Like it literally is only for like a split second because it's just like big animal, very, very powerful sound waves at that particular frequency. But for a tiger, all it needs to be is a split second and the, and, and the rabbit's like, eh! And the tiger's like, thank you, chomp. So th these are the things. And keep in mind that our, our, our sense of hearing is our critical danger sense, all right? Sal touched on this, is that our sense of hearing is, uh, it, we process our sense of hearing faster than our visuals. It's the only sense that still works when we're asleep because our eyes are closed, our, our sense of smell switches off, that's why we have smoke alarms. If you hear a, a really loud car horn behind you, you don't go, oh, I wonder what that is, you jump out of the way. 
So this can be used in what we do. Okay, we can use these tools to our advantage. Wow, we out of time already? Got to make one volcano sound. That's terrible. All right. Um, so we can't really jump into any, I mean, making anything else, but in all, in all the time we have left, does anybody have any questions from the point of view of how I'd approach things, how I'd implement things and stuff like that? It is, it is quite difficult. I mean, some of the masterclasses I've seen done can last for hours for, for just this reason. So I want to know if there's things that uh, people would like to, me to, to touch on that I haven't. Yes. All right, very good question. Uh, I'm going to preface it by saying now what I'm doing, since the last few projects I've worked on, I'm now building all the sound for all the projects I'm working on as if they were spatial VR things. And the reason why is because that's what I did with Yonder and the sound is so much better in the environment because I designed it as though you were walking amongst the trees with a VR headset on. So every single tree is an emitter with birds in it and insects in it. There's 40 different species of birds that have a migratory pattern, but it's done in such a way that if you were, if you were listening to it through VR, it would work really, really well. And surprise, surprise, it enhances the entire audio experience. So there's that. So, if we had the ability to have occlusion and obstruction, as Sal mentioned, I'd switch that on. If it's in Unreal or, or, or Steam Audio or whatever, I'd do that. If I didn't, I'd cheat. And what I mean by cheating is, is that, it, let's just say there's a wall there and there's two doorways on either side. And let's just say the room on the other side is one big room. So there's two ways, it's kind of like a, a circle I can go around. And inside there, there's something. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a dragon or a robot or a bunch of people at a party. And there's some sound there that I want to be able to hear, but I want it to be not completely obstructed. It's not coming through closed doors, it's coming through open archways. Closed doors, I would do, it's the same approach for closed doors. You'll understand when I get to it. What I would actually do is I would basically go, as soon as I get to this point in the corridor walking up, that sound fades up. And that sound is the sound from that room, but it's muffled because it's coming around the walls, etc. So I would use uh, like a, a low pass filter. It's muffled, it's, it's a little bit quiet, etc., etc. Right? Now I don't have all the fancy calculations for obstruction. So literally what I do is, um, so I get to that point and that sound starts to get louder as I move up. And then as I move to the sides towards where the archway is, so at the moment I'm walking down a corridor and we've got a T junction and then the arches are there and there. So I've, I basically don't have direct line of sight into that room until I get to where the archway is, understand? As I got to the point where I'm about to go, here's an archway, and stepping this way, I basically uh, uh, exposed the archway and now the direct sound. What I would actually do is have another trigger thing that basically goes crossfade across to the direct one. So, and, but because it's crossfading, it literally is going from the muffled one to the open one, and it's that door opening sort of a thing. So if you can't do it with all the technology, all the clever technology of occlusion and obstruction and all that sort of stuff, you can hack it. And I've been hacking stuff for 20 years. There's been so many times where it's like, I don't have the technology to do this, so I'm just going to make it up. Sally. Um, I'm pretty sure that WISE actually has tools to help you do that a little bit easier it does. and less hacky now. Yes. Okay. Correct. That's the version I've got here. Wise is everybody's getting closer to doing this, and none of it's perfect because the, this is expensive and the tools are complex, etc. But the point is, there are ways around it. You can hack it if you need to. And and the thing is, just think of it logically. If you need to, go into a shopping centre and walk backwards and forwards past the door and just go, "What am I hearing?" And I do this all the time. I listen to what I. Yes, I do do crazy things out in the open. Oh, the number of times I'm surprised I haven't been arrested. Like seriously, um, I do this sort of stuff all the time. I basically go somewhere. I was like, "What am I hearing? What's going on here?" In fact, I worked on. As I said, I worked on that VR regatta game, and I'd finished. I'd done it all. And then Facebook wanted me to go up to Sydney to do a presentation up there. And on the next day, I, I took a day off. I jumped on the ferry to go over to Manly to get an ice cream. And I'm standing on the ferry, and the wind's blowing past. I'm just sort of going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Yeah, okay, because I'd put in a thing into the game where when you turn your head, you could tell which way the wind direction was going. But I hadn't accounted for when your head is directly into the wind and the wind is blowing past your ears, there's actually a little bit of high frequency, like, you know, shudder past there. And so I contacted the guy and I sort of said, oh, I can make it better. <laughs> and, and I talked to him about 15 minutes, said, 
well, yeah, okay, I guess we could do that and I can I'll probably find it in the budget. I said, no, 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 you don't have to pay me. I can make it better because I wanted to make it better because I'd heard something. I'd been sitting on a boat, closing my eyes, listening to the wind go past my head and it's like, I can make it better. And so all of this comes down to thinking and listening and then thinking some more. Uh, any more questions? Yes. No, sorry, over back. Sorry. With these dynamic layering you mentioned earlier, um, would you have to code that specifically into whatever you would need to do again, or is there some kind of emulation that you need to set up? So, so, uh, so this is called WISE, and there's FMOD, and there's Fabric, and there's, so these, are, these tools are designed specifically for putting the sounds into the game, but it's, it's, it's a far more complex thing than that, in that this is a, a very complex piece of software, but it has tons of functionality and so I can literally do, um, for instance, there was a game that I did in FMOD, I'm using this as a counter, where um, basically you got to build a spaceship and every single component of the spaceship had uh, a different uh, instrument set, so the engines were like drum and bass and the, the, the wings were like a, a, a melody and all sorts of stuff and basically as you built the spaceship out of different components you would get a unique theme song for the spaceship built out of that, then when you went in and flew around Basically, as you did damage to the enemy, the music would change. As you took damage, the music would change. As the, the scenario advanced, the music would change. The, that was all done with about three lines of programming code. Everything else was done in the tool because you can set up really, really complex uh, behaviour, um, whether it's layering or things jumping backwards and forwards or things sort of blending together, and, and you can set up um, a, a parameter that takes information that's already in the game. So for instance, if it was a driving game, most driving games will automatically track speed, the RPMs of the, the engine and a few other things. And so that, that, that data already exists in the game. So I can just say, oh, 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 give me that, tell me what it's called. I can create a parameter in, in WISE or FMOD that basically uses that data. So as the RPM value goes up and down, the engine goes broom, broom, or the music might go faster or slower. So a lot of this can be done with the tools that are freely available to us as, as sound people. The, now, it, it is more complex for us to do this and it does take more time, but it gives us 90% of the control. Whereas in the past, you'd write a piece of music and make a couple of sound files, give them to a programmer, go away and pray. And I'm agnostic, so you can understand how uncomfortable that was for me. I'm like, oh, Lord, please don't, don't let the programmers break it. So, yeah, there, there are really, really cool and complex things you can do. And if you look into some of the, the tutorials online for interactive audio, there's just like, there's constantly people making really, really amazing stuff. And it's because these tools have been made to allow us to. Over the back. I, I don't know how to code. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I do now. I, I, I spent I, I spent a bit, fair bit of last year learning C, what is it, the well, one for um, C Sharp? Yeah, for Unity, which is scripting language. But no, you don't need to. Uh, however, one thing I will say, and this is another one that I want to encourage everybody here. Uh, this year, I'm having orchestration lessons with a, a lovely gentleman in LA. Um, I'm going to drop a name and say he was also the guy who did all the orchestration for Lord of the Rings because he's amazing. Um, I'm just about to engage a guy who works for Disney to teach me how Unreal Engine works because I want to know how Unreal Engine works forwards and backwards. I spent the last 18 months teaching myself how WISE worked forwards and backwards. Previous to that, I wrote the book on FMOD. Um, I've just written a book on the, the VR, AR, MR sort of stuff and the way I wrote a book was basically by going out and doing a whole bunch of research and asking a whole bunch of other people how all this stuff works. I've had several people sort of say, hey, how do I get into the industry? Or how do you do well in the industry? And the way you get into the industry and the way you do well in the industry is you need to learn a lot of stuff and you need to continue to learn a lot of stuff and you never need to stop. Like, like it really is, it's, it's, it's that simple. It's like, you know, there is so much, and I'm especially at the moment with, with spatial audio and stuff, it's, as Sally said, it's kind of like, oh, did I include all the, the spatial audio plugins? Don't know, Sal, there's a new one coming out every second day, you know, and, and, and so it's part of your, it's part of your role, if you, especially in, in dynamic, interactive sort of stuff, you've got to be comfortable le living on the bleeding edge, and that means that every second day there's some 14-year-old kid who knows something more than you don't know, and you should be scared every single day that that 14-year-old kid's going to come along and say, hey, I know more than you. It's like, 
like hell you do. Um, yeah, so, so the, you don't need to know code, but there is a lot of stuff you do need to know and, and the, getting to know the tools I think is a great way to do it. Yes? <laughs> um, yeah, Google it. <laughs> that is a very deep conversation. We don't have the time. Um, I would say, depending on what you're doing, so Wise, FMOD, uh, if you're doing stuff just in Unity, there's also Fabric. Um, and if you're doing stuff in Unreal, the Unreal's audio th tool is really powerful. Somebody was telling me the other day that, in fact, there's a video, look it up if you're interested. I've got to watch it. They sat down, two of the coders from, from Unreal, the audio guys, sat down and demonstrated that everything that you can do in Max MSP, you can now do directly in the Unreal engine. You can build your own synthesizer, well, to a point, but pretty much they're building their own synthesizers in Unreal um, and it's directly in the engine doing what the engine does. That's pretty cool. But you also built a synthesizer in F1. Yeah, well, you can build a synthesizer. Well, I mean, I mean I, the, okay, the cat noise was an FM synthesis. Basically, I use the cat as a grain and I basically trigger the spawn point. So, you, you know, you can do synthesis kind of with anything. Um, okay, we technically are out of time. It's the, 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 the coffee break, I think, so it's not the end of the world. If anybody has any questions, by all means, please come up and ask me. Um, if anybody needs uh, my email or whatever, I'm happy to answer questions via email. You can find me on Facebook. Thank you very much, everyone.